Hello everyone. So for the last several days, I have been under attack by a man and a woman doing witchcraft on me. I have no reason to believe that they are in, are in communication with each other, but nonetheless, um, it's as frequent or as often at times as every few minutes. And it's quite a nuisance to have to deal with it every few minutes or even just every few hours. But I continue to deal with it. And I continue to do everything I know, which is <clears throat> number one, ask Father God, Yahweh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, to remove the witchcraft. I appropriate the name and blood of Jesus. And I also enter the courtroom of heaven and I have received from Yahweh as judge uh, restraining orders against these people and I have reminded God that these people are violating the restraining orders in the spiritual realm and I've asked him to hold them in contempt of court to discipline them immediately. I've also asked him that if he knows as God, because God knows the future, if he knows ahead of time that these two people will not repent then I've asked him to strike them both dead, like he struck Nabal dead. I know that may be shocking to some people, and some people may even, you know, automatically knee-jerk react and say, oh, that's not Christian. But if you really know scripture, you'll know that God does not tell us, in fact, Jesus tells us not to tolerate Jezebel. Okay? Um, and so... I was thinking about how Jesus cursed the fig tree, how David cursed, I think it was Mount Gilboa, uh, I believe that was in Psalms, and here's a really great example of Elisha, prophet Elisha, he cursed the 42 men who were mocking and shaming him in 2 Kings chapter 2, right around verse 23, 24, 25. So if you want to pause this video and go read that or refresh yourself on that story, you can. You know, that email that I received from David Carswell was a very shaming email. Very much is the kind of thing that the enemy does and the enemy does through his pawns. And David Carswell is one of the people doing witchcraft on me recently, the last several days. And, um... It's just annoying, to be honest. Like I said, it's, it's just a, a nuisance to have to deal with this. So if you read this example of Elisha, a man of God, a prophet, he's doing the Lord's work. He's going about his travels to do what God has told him to do. And these 42 young men come out and they start mocking him and shaming him for being bald and so on and so forth. And it says that... He, let me highlight this, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, paste this article in the description box below, below for your reading, for your reference. But it, it goes into breaking all this down and explaining it all. And the point that it pretty much makes is that Elisha did not cower and run away. Elisha did not get defensive. And Elisha continued on doing the work that he was called to do. He did not skip a beat. Um, now I know I failed here in that temporary video that I had up where I copped a little bit of an attitude. That was a a fail on my behalf and you know I, I don't claim to be perfect I'm learning as I go um, but it does say that he cursed them in the name of the Lord now what this article also breaks down and explains is that he did not choose the curse he just cursed them in the name of the Lord meaning he did not say anything specific as to what bad thing may or may not happen to these people he left that specificity to the Lord in the Lord's hands. And what it explains here, if I can find it, 
is it basically says that if you go into the Hebrew, the word curse doesn't mean like cussing. It means to actually pronounce a curse on someone and and he def this article defines it as we can try to uh, find it here to remove or here it is here we go expresses a removal or lowering from the place of blessing okay and let me find the other thing I want to show you guys in this article. Okay, here we go. So, the curse is pretty much something to the effect of, may God deal with you according to what you deserve, or may you be cursed for your sins of rebellion. And why did he do this again? It says here, so Elisha as a prophet saw their hardened and rebellious condition unresponsive to correction. Now I have, <clears throat> I blocked David Carswell immediately when he sent me that shaming um, wicked email. Um, and I sent him one additional email uh, after a few days, or at least a couple days, of him continuously doing witchcraft on me, and I warned him. I gave him an official warning as a prophetess, and I told him, this is your official warning. If you do not repent of doing witchcraft on me, do not be surprised if the Lord takes action. Okay? Because we know that God protects his children. If you mess with a child of God, a true child of God, especially one of his prophets, you're, you're, you're messing with, uh, with God. Really a foolish thing to do. Um, and so this just came to mind this morning and I was just kind of browsing the internet and I found this article and I just, I just thought I would share it. Uh, because this is a, a topic that is not really covered much in terms of teachings and sermons and all that kind of thing. So I will definitely post this article in the description box below for your reference. Um, but if you are coming up against witchcraft, if you have a sense or if you know if God has revealed and confirmed to you that you have someone doing witchcraft against you, I just wanted to put this out there that it is it is not revenge because we are taught in the New Testament to not take revenge. Paul tells us do not take revenge. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Leave room for God's wrath, right? So we have to look at scripture as a whole and not just isolate certain verses or passages. But as this article explains, Prophet Elisha didn't skip a beat, he didn't cower, he didn't react, you know, in terms of like getting defensive or anything like that, and he continued on his path that he was called to. All he simply did was curse them in the name of the Lord. Now what, what God ended up deciding to do was God decided to have two female bears come out of the woods and maul the whole lot of them. But Prophet Elisha did not specify that. He left the specificity of the curse up to God. Because if he had specified something, that is where he would have been crossing that line. That is where he would have been crossing that boundary into not only vengeance, but into witchcraft. Okay, the essence of witchcraft is control. So if he were to say, you know, something to the effect of cursing them so that two bears come and eat them or whatever, that would then be witchcraft because he would be specifying a particular outcome which would then fall under the category of trying to control them. He simply just said, I curse you in the name of the Lord, quote unquote, and no, I'm not cursing you. And just to cover cover bases in Jesus's name, I relinquish what I just said in Jesus's name. I renounce it. I revoke it. I bind it up in the blood of Jesus and I throw it into the abyss, and rendering it powerless in Jesus's name. Please forgive me. Um, but that's all he said. And he left it at that. And he continued on his path, on his journey to do what he was called to do. He did not specify what the curse would be. He left that up to God. 
he went right up to the spiritual boundary as far as he was allowed to go without sinning, without taking vengeance, without crossing the line into witchcraft. So again, I want to just emphasize that it's, it's basically just saying, may God deal with you according to what you deserve, or, you know, may the person or party be cursed for their sins of rebellion. Um, and again, let's go up here. It says to express a removal or lowering from the place of blessing. So you're simply just handing them over to God and saying, okay, God, this person needs your attention because of their hardened and rebellious and unresponsive condition of their heart. And you let God decide how God is going to remove or lower them from the place of blessing. So just thought I would punctuate this. Um, and again, although my intention was not to, um, curse anyone, if anyone feels like I curse them in my words, I just want to say in Jesus' name that I renounce that, I relinquish it, I revoke it, I bind it up in the blood of Jesus, I throw it into the abyss, rendering it powerless in Jesus' name. Um, Intention has a lot to do with word curses as, as well, but just in case to, to assure you that there's no curse being put on you and th through my words, I'm just simply teaching and reading. Um, but anyway, I just thought I would punctuate this. I'll put the article in the, in the description box below, but this is a story that most people don't really know about and don't really hear about. Um, but yeah, if you're dealing with witchcraft, which a lot of us are, and, and you know, there's a, a good chance that it, you know, might happen in the future as things become more and more wicked, um, just keep this in mind, you know, that you can, um, you know, if, if you're a child of God and you're just being persistently attacked like this while you're trying to do God's work, um, you know, you can just say, okay, you know. Um, well, I'm not going to say it again, but, but anyway, you get the point. So I will put the, I'll put the article below and, um, and that's that. All right. I bless you all in Jesus' name.